Hello Fantastic Beast fans! Over the last two years this channel's put out a lot of theories, but how many have we got right? In this video we're going to look at the top seven, at least that we know of for now. I'm Susan Chapala, Fantastic Secrets Behind Fantastic Beast, to bring you the clues. Join me and other Fantastic Beast fans here on the Beast Chaser Forum as we uncover the secrets, discover what's coming first, and play along with Rowling's newest game. And make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you'll be notified when videos post and won't miss out on the next clues. In my last video, we looked at five theories I totally missed, but this video is going to be more fun. We're celebrating those we got right. I use we quite deliberately because although in my early days, most of the theories posted were mine, as the channel grew, more and more we collaborated which was my whole intent in starting this channel to begin with. I haven't yet seen the film, so I'm going on what's been confirmed in trailers and clips. After it's released, I'll do a more comprehensive look at how we did. This will be an exciting week with the film finally releasing. I get to see it Tuesday night at an early fan screening and will post a spoiler-free review as quickly afterward as I can. Then Thursday night, I'll see it again and we'll post a spoiler-filled review sometime on Friday. It will be well marked, so you can avoid it if you've not had time to see it yet. After that, we'll start up again with new theories looking forward to FB3 just as soon as I can bring them together. Now, we'll start our best theories list at number seven and count down with theories ranked by how far out we caught them and originality. In the number seven theory position is that Abernathy would switch loyalties to Grindelwald. While I'm definitely not the only one who outed Abernathy, this theory was in my book from the time it released shortly after the first film, and I mentioned it in comments and then a couple of videos afterward. What gave Abernathy's switch of loyalties away to me was Rowling's comment of him being a pompous Jobsworth. Sounded like someone who'd suck up to the strongest man in the room, kind of like Peter Pettigrew. Coming in at number six, and also in my book in an early video, I speculated that Newt was not only in New York on his way to Arizona to release Frank the Thunderbird, but because Dumbledore had sent him. We see evidence of Newt having a purpose in the city beyond Puffskings, as he has a city map and is following handwritten directions. Wizard Who informed us that this was confirmed in the Chinese screening, when a snippet of Newt and Dumbledore on the bridge was extended to show Newt accusing Dumbledore of having sent him to New York. Appears Newt was unaware of how Dumbledore manipulated him into spying. Counting down to five. This is not a whole theory, just a little detail, but I was the first to theorize that the skull in the trailer was something like a hookah, which was confirmed in the Japanese prop exhibit by Pierre Bohana. Other people were quick to catch on as well. Also, for another prop detail, I theorized that the alchemy symbol in the card Dumbledore gives Newt would spin like a compass, and we later saw that it did. At number four, after the second trailer released, I did a video with Marie at Hanny Deer, where we theorized that Dumbledore and Grindelwald made an unbreakable vow in their summer together. Marie then continued the research and theorized that their vow was actually a blood pact which was confirmed in the Chinese trailer. This seems to be a critical part of the reason why Dumbledore cannot face Grindelwald and a key revelation of the film. Then, what is very much a community effort is in my top three slot. Dalton Perkinson first noticed the four fingers of who we called our mystery woman, and then top Sydney spotted her body behind Grimson. I theorized she might be a half-elf and part of the circus, which seemed to be confirmed when a spellbinding guide listed a half-elf as part of the circus. And recently, Snitch Seeker reported her name as Irma Dugard, played by Danielle Hughes, as shown here in a tweet from Lara. So this practically confirms her as the Irma in the playlist number Irma and the Obscurus and the body behind Grimson. What remains to be discovered is exactly what her role is. At number two, in another collaborative video with Universe Harry Potter, we were the first to theorize that the new cat beast seen in the Comic-Con trailer was the French mythical Matago, and we were right. 
We found out a few weeks later when the Funko Pop Matago leaked and were very pleased. The Matago are traditionally seen as familiars with witches and wizards and can act as their servants, but also possess the ability to pass into other realms, a trait that may be very useful in upcoming films. And my number one favorite theory is in this top spot because of how early I guessed it and how unique it was at the time. Back in February 2017, I was the first to spot this poster clue in the alley behind graves and theorized that it meant Credence would run away and join the circus. This was five months before that detail was announced by the filmmakers. I put this theory together based on the way Rowling liked to use number 13 to mark important clues in her early Harry Potter novels, as well as the odd way Senator Shaw twice called Credence a freak. I have several theories in the playlist about the circus, which all worked out, and you can check them out at the link above. So what was your favorite theory? Please share your thoughts in the comments, and they don't have to be from this channel. Also, stay tuned because in the next few days, I hope to share some of your best theories that you've posted in the comments. Please share your thoughts in the comments. Also, please check out my new fan shop on Amazon for books and Funko Pops and wands and all things Fantastic Beasts.